Good evening, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Revamped. Revamped is a gospel music platform that gives us a sneak peek into watching two of our favorite gospel artists celebrate each other. Tonight, we're gonna to kick this thing off with two of my favorite, the incomparable Lisa No Smith and the legendary Tiffany Tutu AG. Ladies and gentlemen, Revamped. To revamp. Uh, tonight we have none other than the incomparable Lisa Noel Smith. <laughs> and the legendary. Legendary. Tiffany Tutu AG. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We're just going to jump right into uh, our revamp questions tonight. And we're going to start with our first question How is gospel music, particularly qu the quartet genre, how has that impacted your life? You know, I think for me growing up uh, in a quartet family, I was born into a quartet family. I think uh, the impact has been major. Um, it's be become my life, if I could just be honest. Uh, quartet, singing quartet music and traveling, doing what I'm doing has become my life. Wow. And for me, uh, the greatest impact has been um, we actually made a living through singing. We would sing on the weekends yeah. and um, travel the whole summer. And, um, you know, our parents didn't have to work. Right, we we right. sang for a living. So uh, it made an absolute big impact on my life. Yeah. Okay. So when you hear the word legend or legendary associated with your names, what do you feel? Ooh, I think um, I feel like I'm not worthy of that title. I think yeah, for me, I, I never started off singing for recognition or to be, um, you know, quote unquote famous. Uh, so hearing the word legendary makes me understand that um, that it's not about me, but, you know, I can't help. And uh, I guess I'm humbled and honored when people feel like that, but I, I think, you know, what do you, how you feel? I, I feel uh, the exact same way. I feel very humbled. I don't mm -hmm. feel like I'm a legend. Yeah. Uh, you know, even though I've, I've sang uh, for years and, and I've made records and yeah, I did all this yeah. stuff and still, you know, I believe that there's more. I, I, I just, I don't think I'm a legend. Me either. I, I, I can agree I don't with think that. I'm a legend. Yeah. So, so, Lisa, would you say that you've been influenced by Tutu's contribution to to quartet music? Absolutely. You know, I think Tutu and the truth that she's made a huge impact on my life, uh, I would say that paved the way for me to be able to do what I do. You know, kind of watching you as a kid, uh, Brown singer sang your songs, and I say I I walk around the house and, and just act like you from time to time. You know, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you know, she is a legend in my and I and I say that you know just answer the question saying I don't think I'm a legend, but you're a legend in 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 our eyes, wow. the younger generation. You paved the way uh, for me to be able to do what I do now. Wow. So um, you know, huge influence on my life, huge influence. So so Tutu. When you ha when you hear someone like Lisa who is currently impacting the lives of little girls and women in quartet music say that you've impacted her, how do you feel? Like, what does that do for you? Oh gosh, it actually uh, causes some some emotions. I mean, I'm you know she is phenomenal. I mean, you know, Lisa Knowles has sang with some of the best i mean and for lisa knows you know to be doing lives and singing my music i just and then the uh the lifetime achievement award lisa actually did a tribute yeah. and i cried like i was at a funeral oh, I wow just, yeah i couldn't take it wow. and tammy was in oklahoma doing the same thing wow trinity and tamari <laughs> we was all crying because it's just like you know a, a woman of her caliber to wow. take time out to honor you know, a, a group. But it just, so you're thinking like much. that. I'm thinking it was an honor for me, and I think it's beautiful for you to be able to smell those flowers wow. while you live. 
to know that there's a generation of young women who have been completely inspired mm -hmm. by you and your song and your style and your all that. We still, listen, <clears throat> I'm still trying. <laughs> Let me see if I can get one of them, yeah, get one of them notes out. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, we're, we're sitting here and, and both of you are such, um, such large figures in, in what you do. Would you say that it, it was harder for you uh, to achieve the success because you're a woman in a male-dominated genre of music? Um, for me, I don't think I felt the effects um, of that because of the fact that I was a small child uh, whenever we started. And so, um, you know, I, I didn't see a lot of the stuff that, that probably Lisa has experienced, you know, because... Uh, we were children. Yeah. We were children. And my yeah. mom uh, and my dad, you know, shielded us yeah. from a lot of the stuff uh, that went on. And I'm pretty sure it went on. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, because of the fact that we were children, you know, we, we didn't really, uh, we were just glad yeah, to be out there yeah. singing. We, and yeah. I, think, I think for us, you paved the way um, for us to be able to follow in your footsteps. I think of, you know, music videos, and I, I was telling you about a, a show that I watched. It was you and Doc McKenzie and the Williams Brothers and the Jackson Southern Airs. You had a curl. We ain't gonna tell nobody what she had. <laughs> she definitely had a curl. Uh, but to see her as a teenager command that stage and that audience and have that moment, that paved the way for me. Wow. Um, and to see you with you know, all of those men and you kind of held your own, it also kind of gave us a, a boost of confidence that we could do it too. Wow. So yeah, in a very male dominated genre of music, we've had some struggles, but you definitely paved the way for us. Wow. Yeah. Wow. In this, in this industry, uh, and so you, since you said that, you know, you don't really, you didn't really feel it as a woman coming up, what would you say has been your greatest challenge, each of you, and how did you overcome those challenges in this business? I think for me, yeah. again, kind of coming up, by the time I started singing, which was in the 90s, um, there was a lot of female quartets and a lot of, you know, so kind of trying to find your authenticity and find your lane, you know, because I was a kid and I fell in love with like Kimberell and you know, the Pace Sisters, and so I started doing riffs and runs and merging our music with other genres. So kind of trying to find a lane um, was probably the biggest challenge for me. You know, I'm sure that was kind of different for you because you were like paved, you were trailblazing. Wow. So, yeah. And, um, you know, as I said, I was a child, and so um, there was a lot of challenges that I did not experience. But uh, maybe one that I could speak of is I, I felt like, I feel like I did not get a childhood. Wow. Uh, because we were traveling. Uh, we would travel on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, come back home for school, Monday through Friday. And then, of course, uh, during the summer months, after we you know got mm -hmm. out of school, we would travel the whole three months. Wow. And then we would get back home and, and the day before school started to start school so we would have to go get school clothes and get ready for school and See, then go back out of town <laughs> that next weekend now i'm laughing because you wanted a childhood and i wanted a teenage adulthood i wanted to go to the club wow. my mom was saying you can't go to the club you gotta sing for the lord i sang for him i snuck maybe the one club maybe maybe one club <laughs> So similar, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. kind of similar. Because I think, you know, growing up doing this, you lose your life in the, the road and, and want to really sing for Jesus and you're really going to, you know, live the life that you sing about. I really found that I wanted to do that. I was really passionate about trying to live the life that I sing about, even as a wow. teenager. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I think for me, um, as I said, you know, a challenge of not getting a... Um, uh, experiencing a childhood you know we did play uh, a few sports but and I remember one time uh, where I had a volleyball game and right after that volleyball game we went on, on the road we went on the road and I was tired and I actually did not want to go and my daddy was like you, you going. got it <laughs> <laughs> you going yeah so so here's another question that I have for you um, because both of you um, grew up in groups yeah. and are, and are world-renowned with those groups. Now taking steps out and doing things on your own sometimes is, 
individual artist. What's the mind space? I think I just have really been blessed. You know, it's funny because I, I probably have never shared this story, but it was Vicky Winans that said that my name should be in the front of the Brown Singers. I went to go sing with Vicky. Wow. I did some stuff with her and she said, I think you should, you know, put Lisa in the front of the Brown Singers. I came home and told my grandma, my mama, and they was like, let's do it. Wow. You know, so they, and I think it was their mindset to establish a space for me to stand on my own outside of the Brown Singers. Wow. So, you know, they were okay with saying Lisa Knowles and the Brown Singers because it created a space for me to be who I am today. Wow. So how cool is that? Wow. Yeah. So I think for me, uh, this is, this is something new because, yeah. um, I never imagined myself uh, as a solo artist. Wow. You know, I've always had the truth that's behind me. Mm -hmm. uh, they were my comfort. Yeah. You know, as long as I had Tammy in the background, you know, and we've had many, uh, many members yeah. Yeah, know, down yeah. through the years. But as long as my second lead, Tammy, was behind you, me. You knew you was good. I, I knew I was good. Yeah. I knew yeah. I was good. So this is a new space for me. Um, you know, I've been too, too for the truth that all these years. And now I believe that God has called me to step out. I have a ministry outside of the truth that right. I am a person. Yes. I'm a minister. Yes. I am an entrepreneur yeah. outside yeah. of the truth that God has given us. Um, he, he's given you influence over this group of people. He's yeah. given me influence that the truth that may, may not be able to reach. Yeah. But Tutu can reach yeah. people that the truth that may not be able That's to. right. That's right. I'm excited about that too. Me too. <laughs> Me too. So, so when you hear, I, I, I was involved in a couple of conversations. So when you hear the titles, Queen and Crown Princess of Quartet thrown around in conversations or debates about you two, what are your thoughts? I, I don't really, um, I don't get off into that type yeah. of thing because there's room in the kingdom for both of us. As I said, you know, Lisa has those that she's going to, that God has set up yeah. for her to influence and to bless. And then that's for all of us. So yeah. I, I don't get caught up in that. Now, if I'm your queen, I mean, I'm your queen. Yeah. If Lisa's right. your queen, right. she's your queen. But you will never hear me say, yeah. I'm the queen of quartet yeah. or I'm this of quartet. Because the Bible says, let another man praise you. Mm. But I'm just, I'm, I'm humble to be in this position. I, I feel the same way. I think uh, I, I found that you can't get caught up in the hype of, you know, what people say. Because uh, if I be honest, I never imagined that I'd be here today. Wow. When I started singing, I just love to sing. And I still feel like that. So opportunities that I get, I know it's all God. You know, I, I, I don't... I learned something from one of my favorite comedians. He said, don't read the comments. So I don't read the comments. That's good. Yeah, I Absolutely. just do what God has called me to do, and I don't be studying that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Lisa, what are you currently working on? I started a record label in 2015. Really exciting uh, and excited about it. Wow. Uh, I've gotten the opportunity to be able to kind of help other artists, aspiring artists, upcoming quartets, you know, work on getting their music coded and right. um, doing artist development and different things. I really like being behind the scenes. Like, it's really a joy of mine. So, you know, still doing stuff with the Brown Singers, working on some new music and traveling and doing that. But this uh, label stuff that I do, is is what my heart is wow. i probably sing forever but i love doing that wow yeah wow um i've actually got a single coming out I'm, I'm so excited after all of these years uh i've got a single coming out um i've got my own eyelash and eyeliner glue line so that's the 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 eyeliner and the glue together uh-huh you put it on and you and just you put this uh -huh. stick that that's eyelash the on there and i'm actually wearing Simply Tutu. Come so on. all of my lashes, I've got, you've got peanut butter and jelly. Woo. You've got the hold my hand style. You've got the every step of the way style. You've got, um, what, what is another one? All of my lashes, it, it's, it's a, uh, one of the uh, the names of my song. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that is so cool and mm -hmm. creative. So I need a pair of a hold my hands, <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. Simply two two. Simply two two. I want all of them and the eyelash glue. Yeah. You gonna see me batting around here talking about? I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry right now. 
And, and you know, they, they, they kind of small, so they kind of, you know, for okay. the reserve. I love it. Yeah. I love it. You know, for the kitty, it. Yeah. you know, because we dramatic, mm, you know. We, we are. dramatic. Yeah, Simply we, tutu. Can't you tell? Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So uh, I've got that going on, and I have my, of course, my own T-shirt line called Rich Grace. Yeah. Um, God gave me that a couple of years ago, and, and you know, I've experienced the, the grace of God, and it's so rich, and um, so I'm excited about all that God is doing for me. And I want you guys to follow me on uh, Instagram at 22AG. I've got uh, Tiffany 22AG Ministries, Facebook, and then you can find me at 22TiffanyAG. And then I have another page, 22AG. I got all these pages, don't I? Uh-huh. I need to combine. <laughs> we gonna, we're just going to follow, well, we follow all of them. Yeah, you, That's but you got to help me because yeah. you know this, this new stuff. <laughs> I got you. You ought to see me. <laughs> Tipping and trying to figure out. <laughs> Calling my it. kids. I love it. Calling my it. kids. <laughs> I love so, it. yeah. So, we're excited, y'all. We're excited. Just just be on the lookout for uh, for what God is doing. Yeah. Well, we, got, doing we got time for a couple more questions, and then we're going to get out of here. So, Lisa told us that she was influenced by you. Um, give us a little bit about your style and your sound. How was that developed? You know what? And, and uh, Trinity and I, uh, my daughter, we were discussing that. I, I don't know. It ha It's God. Yeah. I can't think of anybody that I pattern myself after. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's God. You know that, uh, you know that deep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were talking about like every step of the way and some of those songs. So did you write those songs or how did those songs come about? Doug and Mil uh, Melvin Williams of the Williams Brothers, they were wow. our writers and also the late great Frank Williams. Wow. Yes. Okay. They wrote all of those songs, every step of the way, making a way. God is always still by my side. Speak Listen. to me, humble me, flowing. Mm, yeah, humble me. Yeah, I remember all of them. Jesus. See, yes, I told you. Wow, you know, <laughs> very influenced by by that style and that sound. I think maybe you know, um, I was wondering and thinking about how what was it like, you know, being with the Williams brothers and. They were so famous. They were sweeping around their own front door and doing yes, all that. Yes, and stuff. I'm just a nobody yeah. trying to tell everybody. And you, were, how was that? It, it was awesome. They were so humble and so patient with us. Because, of course, we were children, mm -hmm. and we had to stop. You know, we had to get breaks and run to the bathroom and, <laughs> you know, and stuff. And then we would get sleepy, yes. you know, those late night sessions. Mm -hmm. But uh, they were so humble. And, and uh, Frank Williams, you know, God bless his, his soul. He was just the most phenomenal person uh very understanding, just very patient, very gentle, very mm -hmm. gentle. Where, where do you think um, you got your style? And, and You know, I think I was inspired by a lot of people. I mean, of course, you know, I got a chance to pay tribute to you and, you know, you were a big influence on me and my songs and style. And, you know, I think um, you were, and probably some of the other ones were very, very influential. Let me ask you this. So, how did work on me come about? Where, oh, wow. Tell, tell me about that. <laughs> so, listen, I was in school and I was a teenager trying to sing and travel and do music. And literally, I was, you know, thinking about slapping somebody. I had a real bad attitude. Pray for me. Don't, don't do no judging. Don't. A whole lot of praying. And I had a bad attitude. And I was thinking about slapping somebody. And I was thinking, like, that's not how this is supposed to go. And I wrote the words. Anybody here? ever know you did wrong? You sat on your bed and wow. you cried all night long? And uh, I wanted to find, I was smart enough, even at 14, to know that you needed biblical backing for your songs. So I found uh, Psalms 51 to 10, David saying, creating me a clean heart. And maybe out of context when I wrote it, but definitely the message was, I need God to work on me. And at 14, and here we are, you know. Mm. And look, that song, it was uh, on Facebook. There was a uh, Chinese, yeah. That went viral. Yeah, yeah. That went viral. I think I think Work On Me is probably my most hood song. That's all, <laughs> all my hood friends love. Anybody know who it is? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. So here's the thing. Lisa, do you have a favorite song that, that Tutu's performed? Oh, absolutely. Every Step of the Way is my favorite. I love, I could listen to that song over and over and over. And I listen to the old version, which y'all, you know, y'all stacked up on the album cover. <laughs> Y'all was ready. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> we <were> right there. <laughs> wow. I think for me, for absolutely. I've got more. I've got a whole lot of brown song, uh, singer songs that I love. But uh, if I had to choose one, it would be Work On Me. And, and 
work on me. I, I never tried to sing that. Um, I, you know, but man, I listened to that song last week and I just, I just couldn't take it. Oof. Cause I'm like, you know, I'm a wretch undone. I, I really need the Lord. I need him to work on me. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. I know that. you texted me and told me you couldn't take I, yeah, it. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't take that. So I, I couldn't guys, take would, it. Would you guys do us a favor today? Would you guys take your favorite songs from each other and sing together? Why not? Let's do it. Let's do Let's it. Do it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable Lisa Noel Smith and the legendary Tiffany Tutu AG. Kiss. Revamp. I love it. <laughs>
transform my hands against the wrath of my enemies And my right hands shall save me I've had, I've had my share 